during the summer of Tito's, uh, we are going to end up talking about dreams. What would be your chosen profession? What would you actually do for a living if you didn't have to worry about money or whether it was going to succeed or fail? This is the way you would spend every day of your life, and it's a dream job of yours. Now, if I look over at a Chris Stanley... I don't even think I could guess what Chris Stanley's actual dream job could be. As don't even say. Don't even say. <laughs> Let us sit and guess. Now, Fez, off the bat, what would you say Chris Stanley's dream job? I'd say he'd want to own a bar. Just because he drinks doesn't mean <laughs> it. That would be like the worst job for him. Maybe a hat store. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I see where sneakers. I guess a sneaker store. Uh, what do you think he would do, Molly? What would Chris Stanley do? Um, I know this is going to sound crazy, but I see him in, like, bed and breakfast. A B&B? &B? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that fucker welcoming people into his home? <laughs> Ma, could you help him catch up? Because he doesn't even know what he's doing over there. Yeah, sure. Do, we, do you have somebody in there, Chris? No. And you got two other people. You got to manage. This is the fucking Wicklin era, dude. This shit is not going to go down this way. He couldn't run a BNB. and b They'd be coming down. He'd be like running in. I didn't know you guys would be up so early. I'd see him running a fucking J&B, if anything. <laughs> <laughs> fucking <laughs> ham and egger. <laughs> Chris Stanley, tell us what your dream job would be. Since I was a child, I wanted to be a stuntman. A Hollywood stuntman would be my dream <laughs> job. For who? John Candy? <laughs> Well, you know, if I was in better shape, <laughs> sure. Um, you know what's kind of uh, sad about the stuntman profession is it got way slowed down with CGI. Now, when I was younger, and we would be at the drive-ins, and we'd see one of those gearhead movies, you know, just car crash after car crash, you always knew dudes were doing that. Uh, when Tarantino went back and did his Grindhouse film, that chick was really on the hood of a car. But most of the time, you can't trust it anymore. Yeah, it was so weird, like, with the cars they actually did, like, on the DVD, a whole f long feature on the stuntman. I think it was, like, John Lee Hooker in the cars. John Lee Hooker is no, a not fucking... I'm not it was so good. I'm did, sorry, no, I was... Oh, did, that's never funny when you talk over the fucking insult and try to stop it. It might work in the family car, but this is radio. Um, when I was younger, Hal Needham was the guy who did all the Burt Reynolds shit, right? And they would actually put him on Merv Griffin. Like, he would awesome. talk about the stunts. And he just looked like a burlier. <laughs> and they actually ended up making him um, uh, a director after a while. Um, all right, here is David. David in Tennessee, you're on the Run and Fest show. Hey, Ronnie. Yeah, in my hometown, there's a little theater. It's called the Cameo Theater, and it's closed, sitting empty. But when I was a kid, I saw Jaws, Smokey and the Bandit, and all these movies back when, you know, it was just one stream theaters. I'd open it up, you know, show independent movies and, and classic movies. Uh, but it, I'd have a feeling it'd probably fail miserably in the town I live in. But, you, God, if but I see, thought it would work, I'd do it. Here's the thing. You never know. You know what I mean? Like... I've been on, I've been in small towns, and there'll be like this little theater, and they're just fucking great. And you gotta hustle hard, you know. You really gotta book it. But sometimes, like you would be surprised, you can even get film, you know, like an opening because so many independent films have trouble moving around the country that you can book a lot of movies that no one else could see for like three, four hundred miles away. Uh, well, you know, I have some uh, younger friends yeah. with, with money. Yeah, I'm a little bit older now. I'm afraid to take the risk, to be honest. But as a younger guy, I'd love to have done it. But I'd love to talk them into it, maybe be a consultant or, or help them with it. It was such a beautiful theater sitting empty. What town do you live in? Bristol, Tennessee. Bristol. I, it's a twin city. It's right on the... Uh, it's actually in Virginia, but across I'd be looking the street this up now, wouldn't the state you? of Tennessee. Uh, Bristol, Tennessee. Uh, the name of the old theater is what? The Cameo Theater. 
the Cameo Theater in Bristol, Tennessee. Let's see if we can find it. Because I want to see if there's any pictures online of this old theater. It's, um, it's just set empty for years. And it's just got so many good memories of walking down it's there. It's a great looking brick building, too, like it would last forever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, any pictures inside? Oh, is that it? Is there actually a stage in there? Yeah, oh yeah, there's a stage in there, too. Dude, it's you can do concerts stage. and independent film. Oh, I know, I know. I'm just, I'm afraid. I'm, I'm, I'm at an age where if I, if I make a mistake, I could literally die broke. I don't have time to, to rebound. Oh, Jesus so, I mean, Christ, I love the marquee, too. Uh, you're a winner, because this is actually a great idea. This would be, uh, like... The coolest thing in the world. But seriously, you don't think that you couldn't do some premieres of some independent films? Then you go back and you, you know, you do like what the Alamo does. You kind of, kind of come up with different ideas of, you know, getting people, you know, you th show three shark, old shark movies in one night. That would be a blast to have something like that. Fez, what do you give him? Uh, he wins the Clyde Davis book, The Soundtrack of My Life. And your lucky winner from Tito's Handmade Vodka distilled six times from 100% corn, naturally gluten-free. Visit titosvodka.com for recipes, songs, and more. Handcrafted to be savored responsibly. Distilled and bottled by Fifth Generation Incorporated, Austin, Texas. 40% alcohol by volume. It is the summer of Tito's. And the reason why we started this is Tito was a guy, basically no money, who taught himself to make vodka in his home. Uh, from there, he turned it into an empire where he's actually ended up uh, having this in, in bars all over the country and now all over the world and in these tasting competitions he's beating uh, you know, the Polish vodkas, the Russian vodkas and no one would have said that this was a good idea. I, I'm going to tell you right now, the idea of turning this theater back into its greatness. Uh, I love that idea. Uh, and it's a much better idea than trying to start your own vodka brand in Texas. That's an idea everybody would say, oh, bad idea. And Tito pulled a Rocky and proved everybody wrong. So that's what we got going in the summer of Tito's. Uh, and we got into this by going, what would you really want to do with your life? 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Uh, that one right there, that gentleman won. Because what a great idea. You restore the Cameo Theater in Bristol, Tennessee. And you end up booking uh, cool movies and then it's got a stage. Before you know it, you got Amy Mann playing there because she's got a date in between, you know, Nashville and Memphis, and you were able to pick that up and do a really cool concert. Or you get Louis C.K. to come in there and do stand up. These things happen. This is how you make it happen. 866 Ron Zero Fez. 866 Ron Zero Fez. Here's uh, Mac. Mac, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, man. How's it going, guys? Good. Yeah, my dream job would be to have a, a great, good head shop that you could come in, burn down, and then go to Bristol and watch a great show. So you want to do a head shop. I remember this was the dream of all the, the kids that I grew up with. Everybody really thought that they could have a cool record store or a head shop. The fact that you even use the word head shop puts you in a certain era. Uh, Chris, what do you think? Would you want a head shop? Yeah, I'd want a head shop. And now it's even it's even be it's better than ever because now you're gonna be able to sell weed there too. Go to Colorado, open a head shop, and then just sell weed on top of it, like a one stop shopping place. Exactly, and you get to hang out and just talk to potheads. We came all day. so close, so close on that last play. Keep an eye on this game. Uh, I'm caught up in the summer of Tito's. Hey, um, Matt. Matt, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hello? Yeah. Hey, I like the idea about a warehouse in Denver, for sure. But uh, I'm fascinated with Vice. I was a radio TV major, and I realized that business in college is all about advertising, so I jumped out of it. But uh, 
real reporting on real shit in the world, I'd, I'd love to do that. Well, here's the thing about Vice, and I mean, this is a, uh, I mean, this was basically just some kids from Montreal who had an idea and started doing it themselves. There's no reason with all the technology out there that if you had a story, you couldn't get it picked up. I've been looking for a story. I just can't find one within 30 miles of where I live. I'm going to have to look further. If you, but I know that I know that what you want to do is, you know, report in Afghanistan. But I bet if you write something up, I can guarantee you that it will get picked up somewhere. You know, we're starting to get so many great writers for the iBank. And I was just looking at Joshua Smith's stuff. He writes only about sports. I'm like, we really could use like the sports humor section on the iBank because he's doing such great stuff. He did a, a thing today of about flops that football players had to because the joke is on late night TV has been about the flopping and not enough scoring. But he shows this thing and I'm looking through it and it's just hysterical. So um there are so many ways to get stuff out there today, particularly with all the technology. Um, here's uh, Tom in Florida. You're on the Ron Fez show. Hey, Ronnie. Uh, I actually heard you guys talking about the junkies. I think I just checked in. And then when Molly picked up, you know, she tied into the whole dream job thing, which I actually just started doing about two months ago, which is... Uh, you know, like how they used to do it, like the Fillmore and all those places, they would do the concert posters. You Love know, those stuff. posters. Right. So, and I grew up loving those. Uh, had a bad back for about 15 years, got it fixed, and just thought, well, it's what I've wanted to do. So I sold some of my records and raised the money to kind of get it going. And uh, within a month of doing that, I got... Uh, two jobs from a band I've, you know, loved a long time. And, you know, they've been great. They're actually going to pay me 90% of the, what do you call it, the retail cost of the posters. They're only taking 10% to give to the fans that are going to sell them at the merch tables. So I'm getting, you know, I don't have to worry about selling them or any of that. I mean, it's just worked out great. Are, and, you, are you doing it in this style of... Oh, um, yeah. Absolutely. Is there like any way we those, could see them? Yeah, I'll actually, uh, I'll send you some uh, to the, I can just post them on the uh, Interabang or to, uh, you know, on Twitter, I can send the link to you guys. Yeah, send it to us, and I'll definitely love to take a look at them. Yeah, I love those old Phil Maurice posters, and today, those things are going for top dollar. You can yeah. make, if you would have just, this is the crazy thing about life. If in the 1960s and early 70s, you walked around San Francisco and just carefully took posters down off right. of telephone poles, you would be a wealthy man today. Absolutely. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, yeah I know a guy, uh, I just got he uh, one of the guys from the that Fillmore Classic era, one of the big guys from then, did a Johnny Cash poster in the early 90s and I, I just bought it about six months ago from a guy, a collector, and he was he's good friends with the guy that designed it, but the guy's retired now. But um, I never knew. I was like, well, where did you even buy them back then? Because they would have, like, first, second, third prints. You know, they do a few of prints, like, right after the show, they print more of them. And he said in the head shops in San Francisco, they would have, you know, just a ton of them. And he said even in the 80s when he started collecting, you know, he was able to go and buy a ton of them for nothing. And now, you know, they're worth thousands and thousands of dollars, you know, because no one thought to collect them and save them. And, and by the way, tying into what you were talking about with the theater, that's one of the big things that uh, there's a place called the Alamo Draft House in Texas no. in Austin. Yeah. Okay. And one of the big things that they've done is like they were showing, like you were talking about, uh, you know, showing uh, like cult classic movies from the 80s and 70s and all that. Yeah. And what they did was they got a lot of the new poster artists to do a new poster for it. And then, like, so say they'll charge you like 75, because these posters usually sell for at least 35, 40 bucks new. But what they'll do is they'll charge you like 75 bucks, I think. You don't know what the show is going to be. Everybody gets a poster with admission. And they, they've had several that, like the Big Lebowski poster, and uh, they did a Japanese animation film. And the next day, 
they were worth over a grand on eBay. Yeah, I actually loved those things too. I saw them come out. They did it like a, a series of them that were just like in different kinds of orange and. Um, right. You remember those, Chris? Oh, yeah, they were amazing. They would look badass. Yeah, they were really, really cool. And the funny thing is, I'm like, I should have just went and grabbed them then, even paying the G-Ball. I'm sure they're worth a lot more money. Now, uh, you know what's really funny about the Fillmore posters is that Bill Graham used to bitch because he's like, you can't even tell. Who These things are so busy, you can't tell who's playing at what time the show starts. Right. Oh, shit. It was a shot on goal. Um, yeah, I'd love to take a look at your work. Make sure we get to see it, okay? All right, thanks, Ronnie. Have uh, a good one. And, um, good. This, uh, we really need a Ron and Fez show collectible poster. That would be fucking cool as shit. You know, this is the Wicklin era. Things are going to start changing around here. Speaking of which, uh, Leslie goes, what the hell's wrong with your imaging? Why didn't uh, the Fall Guy themes play for Chris Stanley's uh, brilliant response? Now, Chris Stanley wanting to be a stuntman, I guarantee you we could have sat here a year guessing things after guessing things <laughs> and not come up for stuntman. I should have known because I've seen him fall down so many times and unmasked. <laughs> I have an affinity for it. With your back, your fucking weak back. I got a bum shoulder, too, I found out. Yeah. I'd last one day on set. Did you even know that, Fez? Did Chris had a weak back? When did he get that? About a week back. <laughs> Those three stooges. Well, I'm not kind to kiss and tell. You're a little late I've now, Chris. Shelby wasn't going for it. True. Um, here's uh, John. John, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, Ron. How you doing? Good. So, uh, I've been trying to figure out how to get off Long Island and live a little bit quieter of a life. And I came up with this idea to start building raised beds and elevated gardens that I, I make them custom built for, for people in their suburban backyards, fill them with organic soil, and plant them for them. And for all the people that are just too busy to do it themselves, they actually start to live a healthier lifestyle. Um, I know you guys have talked about farm fresh foods. And, oh, I love it. Yeah. So now, that's what I'm planning. Now, what do you mean you raise it? What, what, it's off the ground? I make them. I can make them that way, yes. I have raised beds that are just like boxes on the ground, and I make them where they're on legs, like four by four legs at any height you want them. So if you got a bad back and you can't bend down to weed or, you know. It's amazing. Uh, what would you cost to put something like that in for someone? Well, I'm sorry, what was the question? Again? What would the price be for something like that? Oh, for the very basic raised bed uh, that's off the ground, uh, they start at 400 because it's made of nice cedar, uh -huh. um, and I use Trex as the base, so it lasts for 25 years and up. Um, and the price kind of goes up from there, depending on the quality of the cedar you want. If you want what's called clear cedar, it's knotless, and it's pristine, uh, real nice. Um, you know, it just basically goes up with the cost of the wood. It's not really that much of a big jump, honestly, but uh, and then I, I could even put rolling lockable casters on it so you can move them on your decks. Jesus, this is such so cool. And this is your business now. I just started it off about three or four months ago. And how are you doing with it? And now I'm doing it, and the idea is that hopefully it's going to kick off and do well, and I'll get some work crews installing them. Now I'll just get a nice little workshop and crank out some kits and, uh, you know, and just Check up on the people a couple months into it and see how their garden's going. And I think it. it sounds fantastic, dude. I think it's a great idea, too, man. Really. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks so much for calling us. Of course. Thank you. Have a good day. Uh, peace. So, like, who would have thought that would have been a business? That's, uh, that's really, really cool. Um, here's John, North Carolina. We're talking dream jobs today. What would yours be, John? Yeah, uh, my well, sort of what you've already talked about a little bit, but my dream has always been to have a 1100 seat venue, more like a you know bigger CBGBs or like I grew up in St. Louis and Mississippi Nights. But then there's a common wall 
uh, in between and on the other side of that is a record music store um you know it's not about mixing the money really it's about loving it mm -hmm. and i that's always been a dream and that record store stays open till three so when the show's over at whatever they can go over and hang out there and um i got three young boys well not young so much anymore but i tell you i wish i could do something like that because that's always been a dream to, to be able to bring in new acts and then older acts that are playing smaller venues but uh um, it just kills me to see all the like the CBGBs GBs go away and the yeah. It's tough for it. it's tough to find uh, live music places where people play original music anymore. It's true. Thanks so much. Here's CJ in California. Hey, Ronnie. Yeah. Hey, man. Just just a suggestion for everybody calling in, and especially the guy with the um, the, the little theater. You know, things like that. That, that theater has probably been standing there for whatever years he's talking about. I'm sure. You know, there's everything's negotiable. I'm sure he can get a, a one year free lease or something it's just, it's just sitting there so there's always I, you know the other thing too is i'm sure that town would like to see the theater yeah. open too and i'm sure there would be a way to say hey we want to you know uh restore the old theater and see if other businesses weren't interested in investing or putting in because to be a real town you want to have things like this you know you want to have a place for your for your culture it helps everybody yeah we just refurbished here in our town in tracy california it's called the grand theater it was an old theater theater sitting there for 20 years they refurbished it and they've got concerts in there now and and like you said you know the, uh, these um independent movies and it's it's just a, it's right downtown and it's just a really fun thing to do it's, I, I don't know how profitable it is but it also has an art gallery in there and it's just something that it's really gives the downtown character i think it's important that all these little small towns kind of have those kind of features. i agree a hundred percent man because yeah. a small town is a million times different lifestyle than living in the suburbs, you know? When you have just, it doesn't matter where you are, if there's just a small bit of activity that people can centralize around, it changes everything in that town. Uh, all right, thanks so much. Hi, man. Um, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Here's Mike in Atlanta. You're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, Ron, how you doing today? Cool. I've, uh, I've got the dream job. What's that? I build guitars for a living. I'm a luthier. Uh, Mike, what's the name of your business? We're going to go look you up right now. Delaney Guitars. DelaneyGuitars.com. Now, for me, you know, I always find woodworking to be so beautiful but to be the two things that i always think of canoes or or any kind of boats and then of course guitars is just fascinating to me because i i cannot understand how it even works i can't understand how a piece of art then makes art it's phenomenal well it's it's uh i've been blessed uh, you know i was a musician for many years and got so frustrated trying to find guitars that would would do it for me anymore and that's what pushed me into it i have a, i've been doing woodworking since i was a little kid so it made a lot of sense for me just to go ahead and start doing it and a lot of it's math but a lot of it is just the creative and the personal process between someone like me and the artist that we're making the guitars for you know and it, it's it's an amazing amazing living it's fantastic um i'm looking at your guitars now they're just stunning just stunning thank you. yeah thank you and well, you, we know, build for, you know Mike Zito. We built for Mike Zito. Yeah. We built Mike's guitars. And he always has something great. But it was... Uh, I was looking at... Um, some of Rick Nielsen has a bunch of... You know, a collection. And it uh -huh. always makes me laugh when those guys... They, It's almost like an addiction. They keep wanting more and more and more. <laughs> you, the, the thing is, you can never have too many guitars. But then it ends up being an investment. You know what I mean? That they yeah. can turn around and sell those guitars and be worth more. Well, Stunning. So many of my friends now, uh, uh, a lot of them, they're collectors, and they collect old guitars, and, and it really is an investment, and it's a much better investment than a lot of things these days, you know? Uh, it's it's pretty incredible. It really is. Well, it, the fact that you have a piece of work that you could put up on your wall, but then take that piece of art down and start playing it is just uh, uh, amazing to me. Um, yeah, me too. 
Congratulations on that, too. And well, thank you. I think it's such a, a wonderful profession. All right, thanks so much for calling. That's thanks, Delaney, uh, Delaney Guitars, uh, DelaneyGuitars.com. We'll uh, tweet that out as well because um, you want to see a picture of some of these. Talking about dream jobs, jobs that you would want to do. Uh, and it's all part of the summer of Tito's. Living like Tito's, your chance to win today on the Ron and Fez show. Tito's handmade vodka distilled six times from 100% corn and is naturally gluten-free. Visit titosvodka.com, handcrafted to be savored responsibly, distilled and bottled by Fit Generation Incorporated, Austin, Texas, 40% alcohol by volume. It's time to tell us how you're living like Tito on the Ron and Fez show. When I just okay. gave up on music and put the white flag up and didn't care anymore. That's when I was doing movie soundtrack scores. You know, all growing up, I was really scared of the dark. You know, now it doesn't bother me. I can go out, I can camp. I learned then that it doesn't mean anything's going to happen just because you're scared of something. Tito's Handmade Vodka is America's original craft vodka. I went from uh, the Navy, I was a touring musician, to, I've fallen into pizza delivery. But now, a year and a half later, I've made more loot than I ever had before. Visit them at titosvodka.com. Rob, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, Ronnie, how you doing? Good. I'd like to work there. I'd like to work with you guys. You want to work with us? Yeah. I do. Now, what would you do? What would you bring to the table? Uh, good question. I think I'd have to get comfortable in the situation and then deal it out. I think I can. Uh, I think I could bring uh, a little bit more. I could be up on the music behind the bed there. I would have brought that fall guy music in right away. I was thinking it right away. All right, so. Um, you know, you- so somebody who's thinking about music for the Ron and Fez show. You know, it's a real possibility. We've been talking about expanding the team a little bit. Uh, Are you? Yeah. Yeah, it's something that we've uh, that we're always in uh, discussions about, particularly since we're doing more uh, live things and, and moving some stuff around. So there's always that possibility. I always found that the guy who gets hired at a radio station, wherever I worked, is a guy that's been hanging around a radio station. Oh shit, that was close. Uh, we this is we're at halftime, right? Okay, good. I don't know what the fuck I was looking at there. All right, nil nil at the half, huh? Yeah. Um, Seth, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, guys, how are you? What's up? Hey, man, just trying to live the dream. Yeah? Yeah, I've got uh, a t-shirt company that I've been pumping along for five years and trying to get it to go, you know, mega. Uh, we've, we've got some connections. We've, it's called Backcock Apparel. It's all humor-based T-shirts for adults that don't want to be billboards for other brands. Right. Are you looking it up so, for me, Shelbs? Uh, say the name again, because I think Shelby is confused. Badcock Apparel. B-A-D-C-O-C-K-A-P-P-A-R-E-L dot com. All right, I'm looking up now. And you got, where do you get the ideas for these t-shirts from? This is all kind of me generating it. This is my uh, my attempt at stand-up comedy. Uh-huh. Instead of doing it on a stage, I'm doing it on a t-shirt. And how's it working out for you, dude? You know, we're, we're five years in, so I think we're kind of past, uh, you know, is it gonna, is it gonna live or not stage? Uh huh. Uh, but it's a, you know, it's a fight every day, and so the dream is to kind of get it to where it's all over, you know, um, I want it to, I want it to hit big, like, uh, you know, South Park. Uh, that's, that's how I see it. I, I see it as being the, you know, the Trey Parker and Matt Stone of t-shirts, or the, or the, uh, the Daniel Tosh of t-shirts, something well, like that. Well, I guess you're always just that one viral idea away from making it all happen, too, right? I I, I hope so, but yeah. uh, that hasn't been the case so far. So far, right. You know, but it's almost like when you're songwriting. It's like once you write that one hit song, they'll start to pay attention to everything you've done before. Um you know, it's always funny to me, you know, that, you know, people talk about rock and roll, but, 
you see that so many bands, their first couple albums did not even chart or low chart it. And then you go back and like Springsteen, for instance, and you're like, why did these albums work? They're maybe my favorite album out of all of them. And it's, you know, didn't. And it's because people don't give you a break until they see that you can already do it. You know, right. And then they go back and right. This guy's been around forever. The, right. the, the 10 year overnight success. All right, so folks, go check it out. It's Bad Cock uh, T-shirts. Thank you so much for calling on Way to Live the Dream. It's the uh, summer of Tito's. Living like Tito's. And we always got into these discussions after having Tito on our show before and saw a guy who kind of showed that the American dream still lives. Um, Here's Scott. Scott in Austin. You're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, how you doing, guys? Cool. Hey, yeah, um, about three or four years ago, I started collecting driftwood to the Merrimack River up in Massachusetts, and uh, and I make um, things as simple as uh, frame a uh, mirror, and, and they absolutely love them. I've got uh, some nautical themes that I'll do, and it uh, it's really worked out great. I What's the name of your my... business? Are you online? Well, it's called Drift Out. I'm not online, but um, I sell all my stuff uh, my ironically, my ex wife's um, little shop in Mountain Ipswich and all of the Ipswich and uh, and you know it's it's worked out great. So sure. That's, uh, dude, dude, the idea sounds fantastic, but you ought to turn a piece of driftwood into a phone because your phone sucks. <laughs> All right, thanks for calling us. 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. Only got time for a couple more calls, uh, then we got to go to break here. Here's Mike. Mike, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hold on, Ryan. Let me put down this pork, leg, and cheese. Fucking starving. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, sell everything from Jersey, man. Go down there. Get myself a nice boat, sit around, and uh, take people out fishing all day long, man. Nice and easy, a couple mates down on the deck. Just uh, sit up top, relax down in Key West, you know? Is that, is, that the, is that the dream? Is that the long-term dream? I mean, if I could ever swing it, absolutely, you know. That'd be the goal now. I work in a local marina up here, you know. How so, tough is it to get your captain's it. license, though? Is that a tough thing to pull off? Uh, no, no, just uh, a couple courses. There's a couple different ones you can get for it and uh you know you just got to stand straight now and everything else and because you know they've been responsible for people's lives and everything you know so they want you to know what you're doing uh all right big ass big ass prize closet fez tell them what he wins all right all right, all right, all right. you won iron man on dvd signed by john favreau the director <laughs> uh dave you're on the run of fez show dave yeah, Dave. Sorry. Uh, my dream job would be to have a, a really nice RV and go out and help out new and young comedians just to give them a free ride to wherever they want uh, to help, you know, get their names out there, get further away from home, and spread their spread their job, you know? The problem is, do you know how bad comedians smell on the road? I mean, it's just horrific... Yeah, I, I've seen things already, where, so honestly, they've had to burn hotel rooms after a comic has stayed there <laughs> for a week. I can't imagine anything more frightening um, uh, than that. John in Tulsa, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, yeah. how you doing, Ron? Good. Yeah, I built handcrafted custom kitchen tree cabinets. And you already do that for a living now? Yeah. Uh, and I'm, it's hand carving. I I do all kinds of carving. Any design that people come up with, they want to put in their cabinets. And uh, I just uh, been doing it most of my life. And um, I was real good at carving as a kid, so I decided I'd put it into an unusual home setting. Now, the so the cabinets are already there. You don't put in the cabinets. No, I make the cabinets, too. Oh, you make the cabinets, and then you and carve. Is any of your stuff up artists. online? No, no. It's all in people's houses. I don't I don't post it in anybody's house up in there. You know, but uh, I've just kind of known locally around around here and in Oklahoma City. And people, that, it goes by word of mouth. People are like, where in the hell did you get that cabinet? <laughs> oh, this guy here does it. And I get a call from them. And you're making a living at this. It's a, It's a good business for you. Yeah, and you know, and I'm not doing the the hand carved 
doors uh-huh. for them than I just do regular kitchen cabinets. Well, I got to tell you, see, here's the amazing thing to me, that everybody's always trying to market, and, you know, John is just telling us, hey, I'm good at this, and other people will tell, this is where I got it done, and he can live that dream. John, going into the big-ass prize closet, I think it's just an amazing story. I love it. I appreciate it. Okay, my friend. That's a great, great story. He doesn't advertise anywhere, and yet he works because people dig what he does. That's fantastic. John, hold on the line. You won. Say anything on DVD signed by John Cusack. Really, really cool. And that's from Tito's Handmade Vodka, distilled six times from 100% corn, naturally gluten-free. Visit titosvodka.com. Handcrafted to be savored responsibly, distilled and bottled by Fifth Generation Incorporated in Austin, Texas. 40% alcohol by volume. Love playing the game uh, Living Like Tito because I love hearing people's stories. Sometimes if you just pay attention to the media, you will think there's no way to do stuff. And then you hear from somebody like John, who's his own boss, who's creating, and then not even busting his ass to market it or worrying. Just the work comes in. People find him. That's fantastic. It's great, great to hear. Uh, we got to take a break here.